A creaky mountain bike can drive even the most sane mountain biker absolutely bonkers. So today we're going to be having a look at all the things that creak on your bike, how they creak, how to identify the creaks, and more importantly, what to do about it. So today's video isn't actually a question from you lovely viewers, although it is a question that comes up quite a lot. It's actually born from me being out riding. So I was out riding at the weekend, sessioning a local spot, which I love, and my beloved reactor was making a right old racket. It was really, really creaking. And uh, in fact, if you look at some of this GoPro footage that's flying past on screen now, uh, listen past my rather heavy breathing. I am holding the GoPro in my mouth there, and you'll hear the creaking. Even just seeing the footage again makes me wince. Yeah, I just can't stand it. So first thing I did when I got home was put the bike straight in the work stand and start pulling stuff off it frantically. So as you might be able to see next to me here, I've got my cranks, got the uh, headset, the shock, all the shock harder, all that stuff. I've virtually stripped the bike down. The only thing left I've got to take off is the bottom bracket on there. Um, and I'm gonna work my way through it. But the point was, I got to that point and I thought I should probably turn this into a video. So, well, here we are. So before we have a look at all of the culprits of things that can actually creak and drive you crazy, let's think a little bit about the way that you identify a creak when you get one, because there's several different options that can come up whilst you're riding. So in order to identify that creak, the best thing you can do is go somewhere with really smooth tarmac, not a field or anywhere. Uh, you want something, a smooth surface, like a, an empty car park, somewhere where it's gonna be safe to, to do a little experiment and ride around a little bit and you need to try and identify what's going on. So you wanna do some pedaling, you wanna do some bunny hop, some dynamic moves where you're loading that bike up a bit, uh, the sort of thing that could make it creak, heavy braking, uh, sitting down, stood up, various different things. So you need to work out when it's making that creak. Now, if it's making a creak when you're sat down, could be a number of things on the bike. If you're, you know, including the seat in the seat post itself. If you're doing it when it's stood up, you can, uh, you can rule out the seat post, the saddle, the seat clamp, that sort of thing. Uh, and also, is it doing when it's pedaling? Is it doing it when you're coasting? You need to ask yourself all of these questions. It's gonna become a lot easier to sort of target where on the bike it's from. So let's have a look at all of the likely candidates for causing that dreaded creak on a bike. Okay, so first up then, let's talk about the seated style creak. So there's two variations on this. There's when you're pedaling and there's when you're coasting. Now when you're pedaling, of course, it could be something to do with the seat area of the bike, but it could also be something to do with your transmission. We'll get to that in a bit. So let's assume you've got a creak and it's based when you're sat down on the bike and it's only doing it when you're coasting. That means freewheeling, not pedaling. So it's gonna be something to do with the saddle, the saddle rails, the clamp at the top here, holding the, the saddle rails themselves onto the seat post, uh, the bolts perhaps, uh, the bolts and the inserts there, like the captive nuts. It could be the seat post creaking within the frame, or it could be the clamp um, creaking in some sort of variation there. So, first things first is check the actual bolts at the top are tight. Now, these could be a T25 Torx, they could be a four mil, five mil, or even a six on some bikes. Some bikes will have two, uh, some bikes will have a single one. They all vary slightly. Now, when you go to check if they're tight, if they're creaking or sound a bit gritty, take them straight off. Take them off, give them all the clean, clean. The actual cradle itself, uh, because of the fact that if you can get any grit under there, which is quite likely when it fires off the back wheel, it can find its way in there. And just with the body weight and even a minute amount of movement at the top of the clamp there, that will translate as creaking. So that will be your culprit. Now, some people I've heard like to use a bit of thread lock on the actual threads of these bolts to stop them rattling loose over time. Personally, I don't like to because I've had them come loose at the size of trails and I've needed to make adjustments for one reason or another and only had a multi-tool. If you slip with a multi-tool, which is far more likely than usual, you're gonna scratch the top of your dropper post there. So I'd actually use a small amount of grease, but make sure that you use a torque wrench to get them to the correct setting. Of course, when you're out on the trail, you're not gonna have one of those, but it's good to do it in a workshop if you can. So with that in mind, if that's still creaking, then it could be the actual rails in the saddle itself. So if I just get another saddle here to look at, 
Now this one's obviously brand new, so this won't creak, but an old saddle, the rails where they're actually pushed and sometimes bonded into the actual, the upper or the, the body, main part of the actual saddle itself, they can creak inside here. And you can actually think it's something else on a bike and totally ignore this. So if you've got an old saddle, give it a bit of light, move those rails around, see if you can actually make it make any noise. Obviously that is rock solid, it's a brand new saddle, but your one might have had some serious miles on it, in which case it could well be the culprit. Now the next one to look at will be the actual, uh, the interface where the seat post goes into the frame. So it could be the actual collar here, could be the bolt and the captive nut, that could be dry just like the bolts at the top there. The actual collar could have grit underneath it, the same as up the top there. You get a lot of grit coming off the back wheel, so if that's the case, clean it all off, put a bit of grease on there to make sure um, any movement won't translate as creaking and to make sure it goes on nice and smoothly. And then check the actual interface with the post into the frame. Now this is a carbon frame with an alloy post, so I use carbon gripper. So it's essentially an assembly compound that's carbon safe. Um, it's basically a grease with floating sort of grit in it. If you were to add a bit of traction, it means you don't have to over torque the bolt to stop things slipping. Of course, any movement at all with your weight on it will translate as creaking, unfortunately. So this is definitely an area that many people neglect. In fact, I don't know anyone that doesn't use grease in this part of the bike, but it's very easy to just stick a post in there, perhaps just to get it set up and actually not put grease in there. So carbon safe grease with a carbon frame. If you've got an exotic frame like a titanium, something like that, and you're using a steel post or, or even an alloy post, it's probably a good idea to use copper compound or copper slip, something like that. Something that's like an anti-seize because metal to metal, sometimes it can react, especially with those cool metals like that. So make sure you use the correct stuff, get it all talked up, and then that is that out of the equation. Now, when you're seated and you're pedaling, um, you're gonna have less power going through the transmission than if you're stood up. So for, for now, let's assume that this could be something to do with your cranks, your pedals, your bottom bracket, stuff like that. So in this case, I've actually taken the cranks off the bike. I've already inspected my bottom bracket. That's a new fitment on the bike, so I know it's okay, but it's a good idea to take cranks off and check the bottom bracket. Feel those bearings, if they're knackered, you'll get movement there. Movement translates as creaking quite a lot of the time. So that could be a culprit, in which case replace those bearings or if need be, replace the bottom bracket. Uh, whilst you're at it though, check the bottom bracket is actually screwed in uh, or if it's a press fit one, your problem may well lie there. Now press fit bottom brackets, they should be installed using a press fit retaining compound. This is essentially like an industrial strength glue. It's like a cross between a glue and a thread lock, specifically designed for the purpose of stopping press fit bottom brackets moving within a frame. Now that movement in the frame is called walking. Uh, we're talking like a, a minute amount, barely noticeable by feel, but that tiny amount will translate as creaking as things move around and put undue pressure on abnormal parts of the bike and uneven parts of the bike as you're pedaling. So for a press fit bottom bracket, really, that is a separate video in itself. And I'm not sure I've made it for a while, so I will be making that one again. In fact, I'm gonna be making a whole lot of videos coming up soon because we, are, we have a top secret book project coming. So uh, more on that coming up. But um, yeah, check your press fit bottom bracket. The rule with those is use a press fit retaining compound. Um, make sure you use a primer if it's a carbon shell, because otherwise you can take chunks of carbon off um, if you remove the bottom bracket later. And make sure it goes in completely straight. Um, use a bottom bracket press or a headset press, something like that, so it goes in completely flush. With a threaded one, uh, use grease on those threads in the cups and make sure they're tightened up sufficiently. Now with the cranks themselves, firstly check your pedals. Is there any movement in the actual pedal? Now, you'll probably notice if the pedal's creaking whilst pedaling, because you can almost feel it through the shoe if there's some unnatural movement. Uh, perhaps if the central part of the pedal's not rotating correctly, if it's like a Crank Brothers pedal, or if your cleat is creaking in the pedal, you can actually feel that. So you should be able to notice that one without having to go to the faff of taking anything off. And is, is there any play? If there's play, then you'll either need new bearings and bushings inside the actual the axle assembly of, of, your, um, of your pedals, or if it's a Shimano style one, you may need to just put some fresh grease in and adjust the cup and cone bearings. Next thing to check is your chain rings and interface. Uh, excuse me for the state of this one, it's absolutely filthy, but um, this has a single chain ring that just mounts directly onto the crank. So this is the fitting here that can creak. So there's splines underneath this when you remove it. So remove this, give it a good clean and then sufficiently tighten it back up again. However, your bike though, 
might have multiple chain rings and have individual chain ring bolts. If that's the case, then you need to check each individual chain ring bolt. Now these are definitely something you want to use some thread lock on. Uh, go for the blue thread lock, like a medium strength. Never use the red thread lock on these because uh, they're quite soft bolts and they're very easy to round out. And the red stuff is more like a glue than a thread lock. So just be cautious of that. Uh, you get away with the green stuff, but um, the blue is the best option, like a medium strength thread lock. Something like a 243 if you're using Loctite, blue if you're using Park. There's various brands out there, so just use the right stuff. Um, but always check those because they're actually prime. Now, your axles will have, have some sort of spline mechanism on the end and threads in the end there, uh, depending on the style you have. This one's a Shimano, so the, uh, the other crank, the left-hand crank, basically slides on and has two pinch bolts that do up, so I'd remove those, grease those. Um, I'd clean this interface here. Basically, make sure there's no chance of anywhere where creaks can emerge, and that basically is somewhere else where creaks will hopefully not happen when everything goes back together again. Okay, so now let's talk about under power. Yes, this is still technically pedaling, but you know when you're really putting down the power. So if it's not coming from the cranks, pedals, bottom bracket area of the bike, then you want to check the opposite. You want to check the back end. Now, if you're just spinning along and things are creaking, yeah, it can be your cranks and that, but you won't necessarily notice things creaking on the back end in this way. This is what you, the time you get it is really under big load to out of saddle sprinting, um, you know, that sort of thing where you're putting a bit more power through. So strangely, something that can creak is the rear derailleur. So check the actual five mil bolt where it mounts to the frame. If that's loose, you'd be surprised how much these can actually cause creaking that you'll think is coming from somewhere else. Whilst you're at it, check the cage, like the guide wheels there are actually, well, clean for starters, unlike these ones. And uh, also check that they're on sufficiently. I would definitely use a bit of thread lock on those because they've got tiny little threads. So you don't want to over tighten them, but you don't want them to rattle loose. Um, and actually, to a degree, it's a good idea to put a tiny bit on that, although I've only ever used grease myself. I've never had the problem with them backing off, although I have heard that some riders with SRAM derailleurs, certainly earlier SRAM derailleurs with clutches, uh, the derailleur itself could unwind itself, uh, I guess because the clutch was so strong the vibration had to come out somewhere else. So in which case, on those you might want a tiny bit of uh, low strength or medium strength thread lock on there. The next area to check is your rear hub. Now think of the torque and the strain that goes through this when you're powering up climbs, especially with a massive rear sprocket like this. That's a 52 on there, absolutely colossal. In fact, no I lie, that's a 51, that's a Shimano. I should know better. Um, but the point is you're putting so much load into here that when it dries up, and I say when because they do, they'll either dry up or they gunk up on the inside, it causes creaking, okay? So don't be shy in taking apart your rear hub. Uh, because it is definitely something on the bike that does need a fair bit of attention and is actually neglected quite a lot of the time. Now, depending on what design you have, on the inside you might have pulls or you might have, uh, got a cat hair on my nose, <laughs> you might have pulls or you might have ratchet rings. Now, they basically they need to be clean and they need to be running nice and smoothly. So DT, for example, use the ratchet rings and they recommend you use their own special grease. So it's a very thin grease. If you haven't got any of this, a suspension grease is actually a good alternative to it. It has the same sort of properties. It's very thin, so it won't gunk up. And actually, it's not bad stuff to use on the free hub pools as well. So if you have the different style system with the pools. Uh, personally, I actually like to use oil on those. I prefer to not use grease on them, even though grease is a better barrier at stopping water and moisture getting in there. I'd rather have to do it more often and rely on the fact that they're going to be as working as fast as possible by using an oil. Now, there are specific oils out there. Mavic used to make one, and there are various other ones on the market, but you can get away with using a wet chain oil. Uh, the wet chain oils are typically, typically a bit thicker, so they work really well in this sort of location. And the last port call is actually something I referenced fairly recently that was creaking on my bike is where the actual derailleur hanger is mounted to the bike. So in this case, you have an axle that goes all the way through and screws into the frame here, and a derailleur mounts to this. But where this actual piece goes into the frame here, I've actually put some assembly compound on the inside, it's a carbon frame. So if there's any chance of any movement happening, that is gonna stop it in its tracks. Check this area on yours. It's probably fairly dry in there. Uh, we're talking like Andy's flip-flop kind of dry because of the fact it never gets any attention or any love and that can creak like a 
bugger. So be checking that one on there as well. And it wouldn't do you any harm in checking where your brakes mount onto the actual seat stays or the chain stays of your bike, depending on your design. Again, it's very rare for anything to happen to these, these ones here as part of the frame, but definitely check them. It's where your brake hardware goes. Speaking of which, braking will be the next point to look at. Now, when you load up the bike under braking, you can get creaking, which tends to happen at the front end of the bike. So let's look at this in a few different ways. So to start with, we'll look at the actual brakes themselves. So check your caliper bolts. Uh, obviously this is a safety thing. You should be doing this from time to time as routine maintenance, just to have a bolt safety check on your bike. And if you're not, do it. Every now and then, just run the Allen key around the bike and check all of the obvious bolts, the ones that are really gonna cause you problems. Uh, check they're all nice and tight. Uh, not over tight mine, just make sure they're nice and tight. Now you want to be checking that your actual disc rotors are actually on properly. Now this one has six bolts, but yours might have a centre lock. Uh, if it's a centre lock, make sure it's cranked up nice and tight uh, and they just cannot come loose. Uh, this is especially evident with the front brake actually, because if they're slightly loose, you can either get rattling, but you can get creaking that emits from that area. So you definitely want to be checking that. Think of all the braking force that's transmitted through the front wheel there uh, via that brake. Now also the fork itself, that's under an, a massive amount of stress and leverage that it puts on the head tube of your bike. So your head, headset cups, where they sit into the actual frame, if they've been put in dry or they haven't had any love for a long time, they can walk, we're talking like minutely, fractionally inside the frame, but the teeniest bit of movement here will translate as a big old howling creak at the front end of your bike. Now these ones don't tend to come up that often, most people fit and forget with headsets, but, if you can't find the creek anywhere else on your bike and it's coming from the front end, it could well be something to do with your headset. Now whilst you're at it, check the crown race that sits on the fork. So that is, again, I've literally pulled this apart, so this is all dirty. Check the actual crown race right there. Uh, that's always a necessity. If it's not on quite straight or it's got gunk underneath it, that could creak. And one last one, which is actually a bit of a horror story if this happens to you, is the steerer tube. These are press fitted into the actual crown itself. It's not something, you know, if you have a problem with this, generally you have to replace this unit. But here and there, we have heard of steerer tubes coming loose in the crown. And we're not talking loose to move around, but loose enough to just minutely move, which means they creak. Now, if that happens to yours, it's more than likely gonna be a warranty case. Now this fork has a QR code and it's got a serial number on the back of the crown. That would be the reference that I would report to Fox for this one. There'll be a similar one for Suntour for RockShox. They always have model numbers and part numbers stamped into the fork itself to give you the identification. Uh, and they'll be able to tell you on that particular batch if there has been a problem. So definitely check that one out as well. And of course, when you're looking at all this stuff, check your stem clamp, check it's all nice and clean. Make sure the steerer tube is nice and clean. There's no scores or anything that's gonna basically cause any sort of movement. Movement really is the thing that translates or the lack of movement can translate as creaking. Okay, so really the last thing then is dynamic moves. So this is not really when you're pedaling as such, it's when you're out the saddle and you're pushing the bike into things. So anything that has any movement can creak really at this point. Uh, kind of a theme in a the video, but you know, some is rotational movement from pedaling, some is under torque, under power. Um, dynamic moves are pushing into berms, landing from jumps, anything that could strain the head tube of the bike could make those headset cups creak. We're talking pivot creaking really. So if you've got a suspension bike, the two major points here that you're gonna get any movement on the major pivot here, or if you have a linkage design bike. So this one, for example, has a swing link on the top tube just here. Now this link, if any part of the componentry is loose here, you're gonna get unnecessary load on it. And that load is gonna translate a strain on the actual bolts and hardware. Now this is the main pivot bolt from down the bottom here, and that is dry as anything. I can't believe how dry that is. Now when I first got the bike, one of the first things I did was actually strip it down to grease everything, get it good, but it has been ridden through an absolutely disgusting winter and that really is susceptible to the amount of spray coming off the back wheel there. So if you're riding in pretty grimy conditions, check any of your hardware in this area in particular, because that takes a lot of load, a lot of your body weight goes through here. It's kind of like the fulcrum of the whole bike. You know, it's where your fore and aft weight is translated on the bike through the pedals there. And of course, if that's got any sort of movement in it because the fact it's all gritty and dry and that, you, know, you guessed it, 
it's gonna creak. So go through systematically, essentially through all of these parts, but uh, hopefully you can identify where it came from. Now, throwing back again to the beginning of the video where I threw a GoPro clip on screen, here it is again. Now notice that in this section, it's actually creaking. You can hear it just about under my heavy breathing, yeah? But I'm not pedaling. Now notice as I start pedaling again, it's creaking even heavier. Yeah, so that suggests to me that it is the main pivot bolt on this particular bike because I know it's not the seat post, I know it's not anything to do with the cups at the front, I know it's not anything to do with the back of the bike, I know it's not the cranks because everything is tight and sufficient there, I know it's not the chain ring. So really, the only culprit it could be on my bike is that main pivot. And you might wonder in which case why I've got everything in parts here. Well, it's because it annoys me, so I'm just gonna do the whole lot in one hit, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, now, hopefully this video has helped you trace down nasty creaks on your bike and what to do about them. Uh, if there's any creaks from other places I've missed here, uh, do let us know. I think I've pretty much gone through all of them. And now, if you've got any loose shock hardware, you won't get any creaking there, but it's a real sensible idea to find the shock bolts, for example, um, to use thread lock on these as well. Um, as with everything, if you're going to take it apart, put it down on some shop towel, exploded order. Uh, put it in reverse order so you know when you put it back together, you're not going to lose anything. Everything goes back into the bike correctly. Take your time, be systematic and be sensible. Use grease where things have to move and have to come back out again. Use carbon assembly compound in relevant places. Use thread lock on things like bolts that can rattle loose to stop that. Uh, rattling bolts, of course, leads to creaking. So uh, hopefully this is the end of the video. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, well, let us know what you think. And if you've got any questions, any specific questions that are causing you issues, please do let us know in those comments underneath. And we'll see you in the next video. See you later.